This is a very challenging question for me to discuss, not because this is overwhelmingly difficult, but because there's so much to talk about and it can be confusing to learn this stuff. So to try to make a consolidated clip, okay, not make this 27 minutes. I know you don't want to see a clip that's long like that. So I'm going to try to be as concise as I can. All right. This has been destroying students on the USMLE, on the step one and BMEs. Uh, these types of questions regarding pre-renal, intra-renal, post-renal etiologies. Okay, so just cutting to the chase here, we've got congestive heart failure. That's a high-yield pre-renal uh, azotemia etiology for the step. If your heart's not pumping as well as it should be, isn't it safe to say you're not going to be perfusing your kidneys as well as you should be? So irrespective of your actual plasma volume, the kidney's not receiving as much blood flow as it should be. So it says, fuck, we need to reabsorb more fluid to compensate. That's what the kidney thinks, okay? So it's going to reabsorb, it's going to jack up its proximal convoluted tubule reabsorption of urea and sodium to compensate. So what's the result? We get a high BU endocrinian ratio, 20 or greater in pre-renal. We get low urinary sodium, fractional excretion of sodium under 1% because the PCT is pulling all of that urea and sodium out of the urine, right? And then because it's pulling urea and sodium out of the urine and water follows sodium, we're going to be making the urine more concentrated. That can sound confusing to students when you say, but I don't get it. If we're pulling sodium out of the urine, isn't it like, how are we making the urine more concentrated? It's because sodium in and of itself is not dictating urinary osmolality. It's you're, we're drawing so much extra water out of the urine early in the PCT that the net result of the urine leaving the nephron is going to be more concentrated. Okay. So in pre-renal etiologies, diuretic use, really high yield, NSAID use, and congestive heart failure. These are the three most important causes for US simile. We're going to have a BU endocrinian ratio 20 or greater. We're going to have fractional excretion of sodium under 1%. And we're going to have a high urinary osmolality and specific gravity. If it's high, that's concentrated urine. If specific gravity, so we, so we have a high specific gravity. If we have a low specific gravity, that's dilute urine. Now, I should just make a point about these numbers for specific gravity. Around one, is as dilute as you get. So one point, in terms of what I've observed on NBME questions, 1.001 to 1.005, that's diabetes insipidus, psychogenic polydipsia range. When we talk about 1.025 to 1.030, that's SIADH, severe dehydration range, okay? So when we see these values of 1.025, we can say, yeah, those are more concentrated. And that's what we expect in this case. And choice C is the only answer where we have a, a BU endocrinian ratio greater than 20. We have low urinary sodium and we have a high urinary specific gravity. So we have concentrated urine. Important causes of intrarenal for the step, acute tubular necrosis. Okay. So gentamicin, cisplatin, classically nephrotoxic drugs that cause ATN. I should make a point that NSAIDs do not cause acute tubular necrosis, at least on USMLE, okay? NSAIDs can cause pre-renal, they can cause chronic analgesic nephropathy, interstitial nephropathy with eosinophils in the urine, but NSAIDs aren't going to cause acute tubular necrosis. So when we have NSAIDs, beta-lactams, cephalosporins, that's tubulo-interstitial nephropathy, interstitial nephritis, same thing, whereas drugs like gentamicin, aminoglycosides, and cisplatin, cause acute tubular necrosis. Ischemia, also super high yield, due to decreased blood flow. This is going to be real fucking confusing. If you exsanguinate, e.g. patient loses blood during surgery, temporarily drops to a blood pressure of 80 on 40 for a minute before being resuscitated, or a patient has ventricular fibrillation with 30 seconds of loss of perfusion to the kidney before being resuscitated, that's an acute ischemia. And the PCT has lots of ATPase pumps that have high oxygen demand, we get slothing of the renal tubules. We get acute tubular necrosis versus, and that's intrarenal, versus NSAID use over four to six weeks is more subacute. That causes prerenal. Congestive heart failure, it's more of a subacute to chronic process. That's prerenal. Diuretic use, it's not going to cause renal etiologies right away. It might take a few weeks of patients being on diuretics, being dehydrated before they get prerenal. 
see the difference. It's really high yield. So if the US family gives you a one liner, patient lo loses blood during surgery, patient is V-fib for 30 seconds. Uh, what's the diagnosis? You're going to choose intrarenal, which is going to be a B BUN to creatinine ratio under 20, fractional excretion of sodium greater than 1%, and a more dilute urine, okay? This can get really confusing, I know, but I just want to make a point that I have observed NBME questions where the BUN to creatinine ratio does not match up to what we expect, maybe about 20% of the time. It's the fractional excretion of sodium that matters. So you might get a question where they say patient uh, is on diuretics for the past two months, and has a, they'll tell you the fractional excretion of sodium is under 1%. You're like, cool, this is pre-renal. And then you'll see the BUN to creatinine ratio is 19. And you're like, what the fuck? You're like, how is that possible? I thought it was supposed to be 20 or greater. As I said, this will happen about 20% of the time is my guess. Uh, so it's the fractional excretion of sodium that's more accurate. BUN to creatinine ratio can occasionally be off, okay? Um, I should also point out that first aid will make a distinction between uh, intrarenal and postrenal. Postrenal classically being uh, like BPH, okay, or even uh, cancer like cervical cancer impinging on the ureters or some sort of strictures uh, of the urethra, okay? But first aid will make a distinction between uh, intrarenal and postrenal for its BUN to creatinine ratio. They'll have, at least at this point in time, they've had for many years, uh, intrarenal under 15 for BUN to creatinine ratio, uh, postrenal 15 to 20. It's fucking wrong because on NBME questions, you'll see a cutibular necrosis where they'll EG give you BUN to creatinine ratio 17, 18, okay? The same way they might give you pre-renal occasionally, that's 19. So just the point I teach now is just most of the time, pre-renal, 20 or greater. Most of the time, not pre-renal, just under 20, okay? Uh, so cutibular necrosis, we said ischemia, classically, uh, drugs such as aminoglycoside cisplatin, also myoglobinuria in the setting of rhabdo, myoglobin is nephrotoxic, and also classically IV contrast. So once again, this can be an extended clip. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to make more content on this stuff. It can be really annoying when you're learning this material initially, but your short recapitulation is congestive heart failure, high yield cause of pre-renal azotemia for the step. Kidney senses decreased blood flow. It's going to jack up reabsorption of urea and sodium to compensate. So you have a high BUN to creatinine ratio. You have low urinary sodium, and your urine becomes more concentrated. You're going to have a high urinary specific gravity, okay? If you liked this clip, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.